Um, if you guys know from the YouTube, uh, about a few days ago, we watched one of the most insane videos I've ever seen in my entire life. And it was about <laughs> putting ketchup on a disc to make it dirty so you could do a lag clip in SpongeBob for the original Xbox. So it got me thinking, what are the weirdest and wildest and wackiest and craziest speedruns out there? So I did some research and I have come back with one, two, three, four, five interesting and hilarious speedruns that I wanna watch together with you. We'll start with this one. And this is an in-game uh, speedrun <laughs> of the game Two Worlds. And it only takes place in four minutes. So we're gonna watch it right now. He has the game do the work of beating the final boss for him. So coming up is a very important trick. This is a fence and oh my God, uh, we get it? jump over it. Will I get it? Amazing. Oh my God. Oh. No animation. Oh, no holy shit. So if you actually screw that up, you will get an animation that'll lose you about a second. The final boss of the game is right up here. It's this guy. You can't see me pointing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're just gonna attack him with a fireball and then we're gonna talk to this guy because he can talk to us later. So this is the final boss. That's the final boss. Uh, he did attack me. Nice. Right, so I trick him into throwing a fireball at me and the fireball actually has splash damage. So the splash damage, if I stand close enough to a town member, uh, the splash damage also hits the townsperson. And it turns out that townspeople don't like that. They get super pissed off and uh, attack the final boss of the game for me. <laughs> so the final boss of this game is 40,000 health, which is actually quite a bit. Um, for reference, our sword attack does about 10 damage. So he just stands uh, there. The there's the speed run. Over here, we he can. just stands there and, and watch the town. And we play this on the original patch of the game because there's a glitch where once this guy dies, oh. Uh, the game ends, so get ready on time. Time. <laughs> oh my god! Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> That's one of the wildest videos I've ever seen. I think it's so funny. Because he's not, he doesn't move. He walks up to the final boss, dies, and then watches as the entire town beats the shit out of him. But this is, this is number four. And this is for GoldenEye007. And this one was actually banned for being too game-breaking. You see, on some levels in GoldenEye, particularly train and facility, you're waiting at the end of the mission until a certain objective is completed. But what if you could skip all of that waiting time? You play through the level normally, but okay. you need to have a second controller plugged into the second controller port. Okay. And not just any second controller, but a dismantled second <laughs> controller. You literally press down on the exposed circuit board of the second <laughs> controller. This has some absolutely bizarre effects on numerous levels in GoldenEye. This will freeze the game temporarily, then release, and the objective will complete while the in-game timer will not pass, thus saving all the time it would normally take for the objective to complete. The level then fades. When people say, like, like every time you watch any speedrun, there'll be people in the chat saying, like, how do people discover this stuff? Like, how do they discover that, like, Spongebob can jump through that area? Or whatever. Like, like, but for in-game stuff, I'm always like, all right, you give people enough time, they'll figure it out. I don't know how anyone discovers this by, by happenstance. How do you happenstance have a second controller plugged in, exposed, and you're fucking pressing your thumb down in the... Well, when this finally all came to light, the entire community unanimously agreed that it was the single most absurd strategy that had <laughs> ever been conceived and executed. And everyone agreed that it simply could not be allowed to stand. Number three is a game I know and love, but not like this. I am talking, of course, about League of Legends. <laughs> I was looking at the speedrun.com leaderboards when I was looking at most popular speedrun games. League of Legends is one of the most popular speedrun games in the world. It's like top 10. And I was like, how the f do you speedrun LOL? They speedrun every f thing in this game. And it's more popular than like almost every game you've heard of. Look how many runs there are of the tutorial. Part one of the tutorial has this many runs. <laughs> this is the world record. Look how hyped this is. <laughs> Holy sh! we're about to watch history in the making. <laughs> this APM's off the charts, dude. <laughs> What's funny is the tutorial doesn't, like, it does not kill you. Look how little the tower does. 
So that means other people can't do this for some reason. I don't know what's so special about it. It looks like he's walking forward using his skills and right clicking. Why is there no game audio? <laughs> I don't know. Is that the weirdest part of this? <laughs> the way he's mashing is fucking funny. Come on! Okay, what the fuck? Oh my, what? Oh my god! Oh my god! If that people run it and you can't tie, then he must have done something amazing. I just didn't notice. Because he beat, listen, he beat the next best time by three seconds. That's huge. This is the craziest one. They speed run killing the scuttle crab. The scuttle crab is a jungle monster that spawns at three minutes, 15 seconds every time. So it's a fucking like 20 way tie for first because they all just kill it when it spawns. Why the f is this a category? They're speed running, losing the game. Who can lose the game faster? Which by the way, this guy's not the world record holder. It's my teammates. <laughs> Whatever I queue up okay if any of them submitted they would all hold the one first slot but this guy has the one because he did the botter to submit it he picks a moo moo he walks down here when minions spawn and he just builds up a fucking wall of enemy minions and then <laughs> he dies he just stands there and watches as the giant wave of minions marches all the way to his base <laughs> that's a speed run it's 90% him watching. <laughs> Number two, the hot plate Dragon Quest speed run. That's right, a hot plate. <laughs> 2020, Dragon Quest 3 for the NES was broken in the most unique way possible, with speedrunners putting their consoles on a hot plate to generate glitches that allowed them to complete the game faster. Look at, <laughs> look at his setup. <laughs> He's got three temps going on his NES while it f cooks. <laughs> One player was messing around with his console when he entered the game with a max level character on loaded. When asked how he originally discovered this, the player replied that his younger brother kicked the console while he was playing, causing it to turn off. <laughs> and when he rebooted, his character was max level. Bro, my brother kicked the f console off a hundred times and never got max level. <laughs> I just lost my f save and then i gave him a black eye <laughs> we never had a good ending it was always a bad end i didn't the give him a black eye shares some commonality <laughs> maybe a charlie the horse bug but if you use the dream ruby item to inflict dream. the numb status on a party member and then go to change out party members the game's code doesn't do the check on the numb character while wow, using dream to change the game's code <laughs> interesting <laughs> The timing required to perform the glitch is fairly precise, so for anyone trying to speedrun the game with this glitch, you'll likely be resetting a lot of attempts. But this is where the hot plate comes in. If you took physics in high school, you may recall that the out. conductivity of metal changes with temperature, which is precisely what the hot plate is doing. By heating up the console to specific temperatures, the electrical components become more conductive which results in volatile outputs being registered. With a controlled temperature from the hot plate, runners are able to control the consistency at which they will get desirable results from the glitch. Due to the effects it has on RAM at That's power loss. insane. A hot plate isn't the only way to achieve this, however, as Baku Zero was able to achieve consistent results using an ice pack to cool off his NES, <laughs> again affecting the conductivity. Imagine the war between the hot plate users and the ice pack users <laughs> it's fire and ice dude so i'll leave the question to you do you think this should be allowed in the any percent category no <laughs> obviously i don't think people should have to buy hot plates and ice packs and f torch their machine to get a couple extra f glitches through i don't mind if it's a separate hot plate category you want to go to f town on but for any percent, it makes no sense. But it is impressive that they figured it out. Impressive that they mastered it. And impressive that they understand the game and the hardware to such a depth that they could heat up the transistors to better RNG manipulate the game. It's crazy. It's impressive. So it's my top two. But it's not my number one because it still requires you to play the actual game you're speedrunning. That's why 
I want to reveal my number one where you get the world record in Paper Mario by playing Ocarina of Time. This is the history of the Ace Discovery in Paper Mario 64. To understand what's going on in this video, it's good to have an understanding of what ACE is. ACE stands for Arbitrary Code Execution, and it's a type of exploit that allows you to execute code that you want the software to run. In speedrunning, it's typically used to execute a command to wrong warp to the end credits, but it does have other uses, such as this. <laughs> wow. Quite insane, right? So to execute an ACE exploit, there are two requirements. Writing some custom code and then breaking the instruction pointer to execute the payload. By doing certain actions and making use of this effect storage glitch, he was able to execute a total of eight arbitrary instructions that told the game to execute NOP, or do nothing in common terms. The community had acquired <laughs> another piece of the puzzle, a method to write and execute code in the overworld which left one that thing, is insanely lucky. writing code that warped us to the credits. He wrote a script that searched for all of the <laughs> spots with the correct ZX coordinates, with the hopes that one of them yielded a Y value matching the decimal required. All that was left was to run the script this and wait. Again, I mean, I said this before, this is like curing cancer level work. This is like every obstacle using scientific method and time and effort to, you know, <laughs> and the end goal is just to skip the game Paper Mario, not even to play it fast, to just skip it completely. <laughs> That's the goal. The goal is to be able to boot up Paper Mario and not play it. <laughs> the only thing left to do was to get Mario into those positions, but because of how precise these positions are, it wasn't going to be easy. There was just one problem. It was TAS only. The positions you needed to reach were precise down to four significant digits, and there were six of them in total. The That's chances crazy. of a player getting into just one of them on their own were astronomical. Hitting all six in the proper order? Functionally impossible. Okay. Ace was fully possible in Paper Mario. We just needed a setup that could be done by a player. This next setup is something else. A spin in place, then 75 hammer strikes, then closing the partner menu. These were the inputs Rain stumbled upon accidentally. That's so crazy. That is what my little brother would lie to me about. That is what kids at school on the playground would lie to me. Yeah, just spin 14 times. There was like one of my first clips ever was me playing Paper Mario and just hitting the same thing with my hammer a hundred times. And then I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, imagine after I did that, I warped to the end credits and I discovered the greatest trick in Paper Mario history. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Uh, okay, <laughs> if I do it one more time, I'm an idiot. I got <laughs> Yeah, man. Working. Yeah, if it's 22, you're an idiot. But 21 was just experimenting. Bro, my face is completely dead. I'm not even... <laughs> That's so funny. He set up a payload in RAM that allowed him to perform a credits warp by switching cartridges really fast, <laughs> then setting up a glitch to execute the payload in the other game. You probably see where I'm going with this. Mr. Cheese had the idea to try this on the N64 with Paper Mario. <laughs> The file names in Paper Mario can be used to write a small payload that sets the room ID to the end credit screen and then saves they, the game. The OOT ACE instructions out, are a jump command to run that piece of code, which just leaves one thing, executing that jump instruction. Fortunately, we had just the setup to do it. If he says we just need one more thing one more time, I'm going to lose my mind. At long last, everything was in place for <laughs> ACE to be realized in Paper Mario RTA. It was just going to come down to who could get it first. The race was on. This guy better get it first. If I had spent years of my life learning the intricacies of Paper Mario f assembly code, and then I figured out all the puzzle pieces and, and f somebody swoops in last second, gets the YouTube video, I would I would. F all you need to know is that very specific actions and the use of some game-breaking glitches are required. 
and the OOT setup takes about 30 minutes to complete, which brings us to the stop and swap run itself. Since this is a paper- It's, it's a run where you hack the game to go directly to the credits, and it still takes 30 plus minutes. <laughs> Since this is on console, they had no way of knowing if the swap worked until they executed the final glitch. Lots of things could go wrong here. Oh my god. Waiting too long on the swap, a single small mistake during the OOT section, or an error in Rain's execution method. Initiating the glitch isn't the easiest thing to do, and you can see Jay Cog struggle and have to reset. This is because it's a frame perfect trick. He couldn't stream forever, and he wanted a sub one hour run. He had time for one more attempt. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Let's go! <laughs> Paper Mario 64 had been beaten using Ace with some help from Orcarina of Time and an abandoned Banjo Kazooie mechanic. Po this guy beat it a few days later. <laughs> And that's why that is easily, in my mind, the number one craziest speedrun of all time. The fact that the Paper Mario world record spends more time playing Ocarina of Time than Paper Mario is, is stunning to me. It's shocking. It, it's amazing. So, claps off to all these amazing speedrunners.